Hello to all my scrappy friends out there. I hope you are having an absolutely wonderful day. My name is Natalie Bukotic and I am a maker with close to my heart and this is my YouTube channel Nat Scraps. If you've been following me this month we have been creating with the National Stamping Month collection from close to my heart and in the last video I made a card and I am now going to turn that back into a layout. I've only done one other layout in this series so I thought it's time to get back on the bandwagon and do another layout. Now at the moment you can't see very much. There is a photo mat, another 6x4 piece of white and a 3x4 piece of white on a 12x12 piece of white doesn't look it to you guys as you um, I start to color you will actually start to see a little bit more happening and you'll see here I am putting on this is our masking tape that I have cut a circle out of using one of our circle dies that actually go to a shaker cut and I've used that to cut a circle and I've placed it over the top of my center white mat which you can't quite see on this recording but believe me it is there <laughs> now I'm going in and blending and I am blending with fossilized amber carved pumpkin and candied apple and a little bit of black soot there as well so you'll see me lay down my colors I'll do one color then I'm coming in with another color and I'll go back and forth between these three colors um, of the yellow orange and red now if you haven't seen my other videos and you want to see the cards I've made so far all of the links are in the des description below along with a link to the first video which has the different stamp sets and die and stencil collections that come with this um, in this special for this month so please think about heading to the description checking that out checking out the web store and seeing what is offered there is some fantastic things available this month the particular set that we are using today is dragonfly wishes and I'm just trying to find my piece of paper to double check that one for you guys and um, yeah that's exactly it so Derek and I wishes and it does come um, in a set that you can buy with a thin cut die background die and some stencils as well to do the dragonfly wings which you can see in some of my previous videos as you can see here I'm bringing in that dark red now now you will notice that I leave a patch of white on what is going to be my photo mat on that one corner there that's because there's going to be a photo there so there's no use coloring that but I do want to color those other mats now you might be thinking why am I coloring the mats there is only one photo on this page and those other mats actually form part of my decoration and it will all become apparent right at the end I'm now going to come in with some black gesso now the reason I'm using the black gesso is it's, it's dark and solid and I really want to get some solid black on the top now I could spend a really long time blending with black sort or um, our black intense ink but the gesso is really 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 solid and does lay down a really nice dark quick and easy I only have to go over it um, and it probably took all of a, less than a minute to do those two strips you do see that I am leaving a gap between the dark red and the black and that's on purpose so I'm going to actually clean up this um, my bench I'm going to clean off the black gesso that I have sitting there and then I'm going to come in with just the black sort now the reason I'm going to do this where it connects is you always have that little bit between night and the red um, in the sunrise and the sunset so if you haven't figured out yet what I am making I am making a sunrise here and you always get that little bit of like a white or a glimmer in between those intense colors those little bit where the clouds are a little bit more opaque kind of thing so I'm going to come back in and fill that in with the black soot 
so it's not as harsh and solid and also go back over that with the red so you'll see me swapping between black and the candied apple red here and going backwards and forth uh, even we'll come in with a little bit of the carved pumpkin again which is the orange and um, deepen up sections with that as well when you're using the oxides inks and blending like this it's really important to realize that you're not going to get it all in one go that you are going to move, have to move between the colors and put down several layers of those colors if you want a really really nice finish so you can see here with the black so I'm going around those joining areas there and they're looking a lot more smoother there is still a little bit of opaqueness between that black and the red which is exactly what I want and we're getting very close here to have finished with the blending if you're still with me at this point thank you so much because I know I'm yakking away while there's lots and lots of blending one other thing I will um, sort of mention is you'll notice that I have some post-it notes on my left hand so I have those on there there's two post-it notes stuck together and then um, I have the sticky side up so that those post-it notes stick to my hand and move when I'm moving my hand and that's so that I'm not collecting black um, ink and putting it over the light colors and light ink and putting it over the black colors so it is just protecting my hand and protecting my layout from all smudge marks there I'm now going to come in with the reeds that are from the dry dragonfly wishes collection and I'm going to stamp them down along the bottom so I'm coming in with the black ink and stamping that and then you'll notice after I stamp this second one I'm going to come in with my black blending tool and I'm just going to smudge over where the ink is now I do this so that there's you don't notice where the stamping finishes and where the blackness finishes on the outside edge and it just takes away that really noticeable um, that I have stamped the image along there I'm also going to come in with the largest dragonfly here I'm going to remove my Sun from there and I am going to pop down that little bit of yellow over the Sun and then stamp my dragonfly right there coming out from the Sun I'm going to put two little dragonflies one either side and I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put those <laughs> and lay them down now you'll see there is a little bit of gap between the stamping and the mat that's going to happen because there's an uneven surface and there's not anything you can do about that but we're going to fix that up shortly I'm popping the mask back on and I've popped this into a splatter box and I'm going to splatter this with the gold shimmer brush and that's just going to leave lots of little gold splatters that are going to look like little sparkles of light in the morning I'm hoping <laughs> you see and I've got two big splatters on there and I did try to wipe them away a little bit it was made a little bit easier by the fact that I had um, gesso underneath that black and then I just smudged back over it to try to cover up where I had made those slightly larger dots I'm now going to come in and I'm going to match my three um, photo mats or mats that I have popped onto the page so I'm doing these there's two that are six and a quarter by four and a quarter and one that's three and a quarter by four and a quarter and you'll notice when I lift these up I'm going to also cut these just a smidge now I'm only taking the tiniest little mill off the outside edge of this and that's where the blending um, tool hits those edges around near that Sun and I didn't want those harsh lines there so by just taking a little mill off two corners of this I've taken those harsh lines away I'm also going to map these other two pieces and I'm going to line them up so that the stamped image is lined up with the um, blending and that the outside slam stamped image if that made any sense at all then that's a miracle <laughs> and the other thing to note with this that um, before when I said that there's a little gap when you stamp this little black border actually hides that really really well so you can't see where the stamping has missed a little bit so it fixes up that tiny little problem as well 
So it takes me a little while to line this one up and you do get to see my head here somewhere where I'm trying to get right in and put them back into the place. And this one I am popping up on a little bit of foam tape and that just adds just a smidge of dimension to the layout. I hope you're enjoying this series. I have absolutely had so much fun recording these videos for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think and if there's something you would like to see that you think that um, I could add towards the end of this series. I think we've got a couple more weeks for me to get things done or maybe one week we might be down to now. This one I'm having a real struggle to line up and it's really important because you don't want that um, outline of the sun to be mismatched. This is a layout that is really inspired by my mornings and I'm going to take a moment to do my journaling and I'll read that out to you. I'm not a morning person. It's hard getting up at 6am in the dead of the winter to walk the dog but it is something that has become my everyday routine. I started doing it to help wear out the dog, Loki, so that he did not cause so much damage during the day home alone. The one thing that makes it bearable is the amazing glimpses of the first rays of sun. Even during winter it has surprised me how much I enjoy these quiet still moments between night and day, even when it is so cold and the ground is white with frost. Those first moments of sun are amazing. Thank you, Loki, for getting me up. So that's where this is inspired from and I will one of these mornings take a photo because there has been some spectacular um, winter mornings here in Victoria. All of my journaling was done on the transparent shipping labels and then I've cut that up and placed that around there as you can see. It is very unintrusive but it has quite a lot of journaling on the page. I'm bringing in some foam um, alphabet stickers here. These were in a bundle I recently received from Close to My Heart and I believe they are still available at the time of recording. So you can check out on my links down below and see if they are still available. What I have done is I've looked at what I wanted being the title Mornings and decided to blend the foam. So here I'm going in with that carved pumpkin and I'm going to add a little bit of the candled candied apple as well and the black salt on the top. Now you see I get quite a little bit of colour on here and the nice thing about this is that I'm, you can go backwards and forwards until you're happy and I want it so that it kind of doesn't stand out really really bold on the page but you can definitely tell that there's a title there and with being the foam I get, you get a few glimpses of the white on the sides but you also get the 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 tones blending into where I'm placing it down on my page so I have a little look and I think I better check because that is foam if the ink is going to stay on there and I kind of wipe it over and go mm, that isn't actually going to work so then I give it a little bit of a heat set think that might work nope so what I eventually did was I bought in my distress collage medium which is a matte medium and from Tim Holtz and I'm popping that over my lettering now you could use liquid glass and that would work beautifully as well except that liquid glass is a little bit shiny like glass whereas this finishes off really nice and matte, and matte on the page which blends with what I'm trying to do so I brought that in covered up that title and then left that to dry when it only takes it only took five ten minutes or so I think I went and had tea or something like that and then came back and um, placed it on the page or oh, I might have heat set it one or the other <laughs> um, but it did dry rather quick oh yep it looks like I just heat set that and I didn't worry about going and having my dinner <laughs> so I'm going to pop that now onto my page and along that top part and that is 
getting very close to finish. There's just a couple of tiny details left. All of the products from um, the National Stamping Month range are linked below along with those other videos. Thank you guys for those who have been leaving me um, comments and those that have been subscribing to the channel. It's been really exciting to see how fast we are growing and I, I am hoping that you guys continue to enjoy what I am putting out there and continue to leave feedback for me as well. Here I'm stamping onto some vellum. I'm stamping the large and small dragonflies. I only ended up needing one large one and two small ones. I'm using the, the micro glue dots and I did start by layering up two of the dragonflies but it just was too... I wanted them still a little bit transparent and it just wasn't enough more for me. So I took both of those off and what I ended up doing was cutting the head and the tail off so there was just wings on those. And I placed a vellum wings over the large and the two small dragonflies. Once I had glued those on, I did one final, final touch. And that is that I came in with the clear shimmer brush and just put a tiny little bit of shimmer on the leaves. Now one thing I will say about this, when it dries the vellum really wants to curl up. So if you don't want your wings too curly then I wouldn't put the shimmer brush on the vellum. And here is a slowdown guys of the finished layout. I hope you enjoyed this one. I had so much fun creating it. Thank you again guys for stopping by, watching my videos and all the love that you leave me. Have a lovely, lovely day guys and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.